All right, this is the hybrid portion of section 9.3. So we have the double angle formulas. If we do a little algebraic manipulation on those and solve for sine squared or cosine squared, we can get these versions. And these are what's called power reducing formulas because they take something that was a squared and they reduce it down to something that's a first power. Same thing with this one. The tangent squared comes as a result of sine squared over cosine squared, taking these two and dividing them out. Those twos will cancel when you divide, and we get this. From the, these power-reducing formulas, we get something called the half-angle formulas. So these square roots come in as a result of getting rid of those squares that were up here. We know we can get rid of a squared by taking the plus or minus square root of both sides. Now you might wonder, where did this alpha over two come in? So this is where the half angles come in here. Because that's a two theta, if we wanna make that into just a regular old angle and not a double angle, then that means we have to take half of it and half of this one. So we took half of it. Now I just chose to use alpha over two because that's what um, your textbook uses instead of theta over two. The plus or minus is because we took the square root of both sides here. And the plus or minus you're gonna have to pick based on the quadrant of this angle right here. So all three of these, the sine, cosine, and the tangent are all on your formula sheet. So they're all right here under the half angle. You'll notice that the tangent is a result of sine over cosine. It also has two other versions. So the tangent half angle actually has three versions. I put all three on the formula sheet. You can pick any one of these three to use. If you ever have to use a half angle formula for tangent, you can pick this one if you're a psychopath, or you can use one of these two if you're you know, a normal functioning human being. So yeah, that's... Uh, and, and, you know, we can do a, uh, a whole thing of, um, of a, a verify this identity if you want to see how those are all the same here. All right, well, let's get cracking on some of these then. So let's see how these half angle formulas work. So if we want to find the exact value, now the fact that it says exact means don't pick up your calculator and take the cosine of 15 degrees and give me some decimal. I don't care if you give me all the decimal points your calculator gives you, it's still not exact. Okay. I'm gonna write 15 degrees in terms of 30 over two. Why, why 30 over two? Because 30 is one of those nice angles that we know exact values for. And if I do this, I can use that cosine half angle formula. The cosine half angle formula is this, it's that plus or minus the square root of one plus cosine alpha over two. Alpha being 30 degrees, because the formula is for alpha over 2. So alpha being 30 degrees. Now, picking which plus or minus to use, well, 15 degrees is in quadrant 1, where we know that all the trig functions are positive. So again, pay close attention to my use of color. It is very intentional here. Now, the cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, so we get this that we then have to do some cleanup on. So we get 1 plus root 3 over 2 all over 2. This is the same thing as this top stuff times 1 half. This divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. If I distribute that, I get 1 half plus root 3 over 4. Now, here's the thing, you can just stop here, okay? Unless I just ask you to simplify this all the way through, you can just stop right there. Okay. But I just wanna show you how, how to keep going here. So we get these two, so I combine those into one fraction. You can then take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. Square root of four simplifies to just be two, and we end up with this. So for the most part, I'm pretty forgiving about this stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Just stop here. It's cool. Um, but if you're um, in WebAssign or something, then you will likely have to keep going. So I just want to show you the algebra involved and the computations involved here of getting to 
that more simplified answer here. So let's do another half angle. We'll do this one. This one's given to you in radians, but let's change it to degrees to make it a little easier on us. 7 pi over 8 we know is 157.5 degrees. So you can see that that is over there in quadrant 2. If you double it, you get 315. That means 315 over 2 is 157.5. Okay. Now, what's so special about 315? 315 is one of those angles that we know exact values for. That's one of those angles that we have on our unit circle that we know, right? Because it, it has a 45 degree reference angle. Now, we can use any one of the three formulas for tangent. So I just chose to use 1 minus cosine alpha over sine alpha. Plugging in for alpha, which is 315 degrees, I get this. Now, cosine 315 degrees. You can see over here, I'm just kind of using a little thought cloud. I'm like, okay, cosine 315 has a 45 degree reference angle in quadrant four where the cosine is positive. Again, notice my use of color here. It is very intentional. See how I did all these, these ASTC in blue and then these signs are in blue. That's why. Cosine of 45 degrees is root two over two and it's gonna be positive because it's in quadrant four where the cosine is positive. Sine of 45 degrees, root two over two, it's gonna be negative because in quadrant four, the sine function is negative. Now, at this point, you could stop here, unless I just happen to ask you on a test to simplify it. But let's just go ahead and see how it all plays out here. With this, I'm going to multiply, because this is a complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply it by 2 over 1 and 2 over 1. Distributing that 2... That's going to give me 2 times 1. Those 2's are going to cancel, so I'm just going to get root 2. And then those 2's are going to cancel, so I'll get negative root 2. I'm going to rationalize that by multiplying by negative root 2 over itself, which is going to give me negative 2 root 2 plus, because that negative times that negative, 2 over 2. And then I can split those up into two fractions, which simplify a little bit nicer here. So sometimes simplifying these, these things takes longer than actually doing the, the trig involved, which is, you know, super frustrating, right? When you're, you finish the problem and you're like, okay, now it's time for, you know, computations in algebra. All right, so these should look somewhat familiar. We've seen these before in previous sections. So I'm giving you that cosine theta is negative five-eighths. And I'm telling you that theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. That's whispering sweet nothings to you and telling you which quadrant this is going to be in. And we want to find the exact value of sine theta over 2. This is telling you quadrant 3. So with theta being in quadrant 3 and the cosine being negative 5 eighths, we know that that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent hypotenuse we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for y. So I get that y is plus or minus the square root of 39. Now how do I know which one to use? Well, because this is quadrant 3, this y value down here is going down, so it's negative. So that's a negative root 39. Now I can use this triangle here. So this is going to be, because this is a sine of a half angle, this is the half angle formula. So it's 1 minus cosine theta over 2. Now it's a plus or minus right here. Plus or minus depends on the quadrant of theta over 2. If theta is in quadrant 3, then look what I'm doing here. I just wrote it in degrees here to make it a little easier rather than radians. It was pi and 3 pi over 2. If I divide all those by 2, I get that theta over 2 is between 90 and 135. Okay? 
that's in quadrant two. Between 90 and 135, that's, that falls into in quadrant two. That means the sine function in quadrant two is positive. So all of this orange stuff right here is determining that sign right here. So I'm going to pick the positive sign. See how I did that one in orange right there? So I'm using that half angle formula for the sine function. Plus came from all of this orange stuff. The cosine theta, that was given to us. So I didn't actually need that right triangle just yet. You know, I just went ahead and did this just in case I needed it, but I actually didn't need it just yet. So I get 1 minus negative 5 eighths over 2. Using your calculator to do 1 plus 5 eighths and then divide it by 2, you get 13 over 16. Taking the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom simplifies to be root 13 over 4. Right, so let's look at this same scenario, you know, same theta but now for tangent of theta over 2. So there's the tangent half angle formula. Remember, you have three to choose from. Pick any one that you want. I just happen to pick that one. The cosine theta was given to us in the original problem. The sine of theta is where I needed that right triangle. So I had to go back over here. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so negative root 39 over 8. To simplify that, it's a complex fraction, so I have to multiply by this 8 over 8. In doing so, 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times this, the, the 8s will cancel. That becomes a plus. 8 times this, the 8s will cancel, and I'm just left with that negative root 39. Adding the 8 and the 5 together, and then rationalizing this to get rid of that square root in the denominator. And then after I rationalize it, I can reduce that 13 over 39 to be 1 third, and then of course that negative's in there. So if I hadn't asked you for part B here, you wouldn't have even needed that right triangle. You could have just gone ahead with the given information and not had to worry about it. All right, section wouldn't be complete without verify that identity. Yay! Hold your applause. All right, so the right-hand side is the more complicated side because of that subtraction in there. So let's start on that right-hand side. So we get this cosine squared minus sine squared business. Now, I don't know if you recognize this or not, but that's a double angle formula for cosine. Remember back here when we did double angles? The cosine had three different versions, one of which is cosine squared minus sine squared of the same angle. So cosine squared minus sine squared is the cosine of 2 times that angle. So 2 times x over 2, those 2's cancel. You just get cosine x. Now, maybe like, well, that is... Fantastic, but that is not the left-hand side that we needed it to be. So what do we do? So you'll notice that I kind of put a little star there to it. We're going to meet in the middle. Now let's start on the left-hand side. Sine 2x over 2 sine x. Do not cancel those 2s and those sines. You're going to have to use a double angle formula for that one. So the double angle formula for sine is 2 sine cosine over 2 sine x. Now because we have all of those x's uh, or all those arguments the same, I can cancel that sine x and that sine x. I could not cancel those before because this argument was 2x and this one's 1x. But now those 2's can cancel, the sine's can cancel, and I get cosine x. So how are we done? I met in the middle. That means I simplified the right hand side to be cosine x and then I simplified the left hand side to be cosine x. Because these simplified to be the same thing, the identity is said to be verified. So I did this to avoid using those half angle formulas because I'm sure that you're like me and you look at those and you think, mm, let's not. 
And I'm right there with you. So yeah, if I can avoid those half angle formulas, I 100% will. All right, so that finishes up the um, hybrid part of section 9.3.